How close did Albury come to being Australia's federal capital? In the second half of the 19th century, there was significant confidence locally that Albury would be selected. There was also some political will to see a capital on the New South Wales Victorian border. In 1856, the New South Wales Government agreed to build a bridge across the Murray as part of a number of improvements along the length of the Great Southern Road that linked New South Wales with its gold-rich neighbour, the newly separated colony of Victoria. The young Henry Parks saw the significance of the bridge at Albury making the link between the old and new colonies. He predicted that the capital of a federal union of the colonies might be sited at the Murray River crossing place to prevent jealousy between the two. The aptly named Union Bridge was opened in 1861 in what Albury folk proudly called the Federal City. In November 1856, a Sydney Morning Herald article reported comments of Henry Parks. He said, if ever a federal government was called into existence, Albury was the very place where the sitting of that government would be most likely, as there would in all probability be great jealousy between the colony and the adjacent colony of Victoria with respect to a seat of government. Therefore, Albury being the most central situation, and on the borders of both colonies, was the most likely to be selected as the most central seat of a federal government. In the 1860s, Albury was being referred to in both national and local newspapers as the Federal City. This continued for much of the rest of the 19th century. Further references to Albury's claim to be the Federal City included in June 1868 for the, visitor, for the visit of New South Wales Governor Earl Belmore Outside the Globe Hotel was erected a large arch. The Albury Banner reported that the arch stretched across the street opposite the Globe Hotel and the Governor could not help noticing the very conspicuous legend on the top of it, Welcome to the Federal City. The Sydney Morning Herald in reporting Henry Park's visit to Albury in September 1874 quoted him saying, he looked forward confidently to the time when the Australian colonies would be federated into one great people, and he knew of no better place, more central or in every way more suitable to be the seat of federal government on the border of the two great colonies. Governors of New South Wales and Victoria met in Albury in October 1876. Sir Hercules Robinson referred several times to Albury as the federal city. Robinson met symbolically at the border with his Victorian counterpart, Governor Sir George Bowen, and they walked across the aptly named Union Bridge. Henry Parks, by now Sir Henry, visited Albury again in December 1889. He still expressed the view that Albury was the logical capital of a federated Australia. The Albury Banner reported that he was greeted by a triumphal arch stretching across Dean Street, bearing the legend, the Federal City and Unity is Strength. In a speech Parks delivered, he asserted, Albury is most progressive and in 40 years, he expected to see the cathedral, the opera house and a town hall in the Federal City. The seat of government, he said, might very properly be partly in Victoria and partly in New South Wales, with the Murray as a silver stream of friendliness between them. Having the National Parliament on one side of the river and the offices of the National Government on the other side. This photo was taken when Parks visited the Lancaster wine cellars at Etamoga with local aldermen and businessmen. It now seemed to Albury residents that the destiny of Albury had been decided. Albury would become the federal capital. With confidence, Albury had a federal theatre, a federal hotel, and in April 1883, at a meeting in the Salutation Hotel, 
the Federal City Football Club had been formed. During the 1890s, there were several Federation conferences, including one at Corowa in 1893. In an effort to maintain momentum for Albury's claim to be the federal capital, at a meeting in Albury in January 1891, a federal capital association was formed. The meeting concluded that the present was a most opportune time for bringing forcibly before the members who will form the federal conference to be held in Sydney in March next, the many claims that Albury has to be chosen as the future federal city. At that March 1891 federal conference, a draft constitution was composed, which became the basis of Australia's current constitution. Then for a while in the early 1890s, the move to federation seemed to have lost some momentum. Politicians from the smaller colonies disliked the idea of delegating power to a national government. They feared that any such government would be dominated by the more populous New South Wales and Victoria. Edmund Barton was a delegate to the March 1891 conference, and it was he who kept the Federation movement alive. Barton, a New South Wales parliamentarian, began a campaign to spread support for Federation to the people. Meetings included Corowa and Albury in December 1892. The Mayor of Albury, Thomas Hunter Griffith, was said to take advantage of the pause of trains at the break of rail gauge to press Albury's claim. When the Victorian Premier Munro and 15 delegates changed trains on the way to the 1891 Federation Conference in Sydney, the Mayor met them with a glass of champagne. And a month later, each delegate at the conference was presented with a lavishly illustrated book written to help people visit, investigate, discover and describe whatever there may be of the beauty and advantage within what may someday become the Albury Territory, the governing centre of Australia. Citizens of Albury reformed the, Cap the Federal Capital Association in October 1897 and continued to actively promote Albury's bid. They also continued to distribute the illustrated publication promoting Albury's charms and they made efforts to ensure maximum exposure to the benefits of Albury as a federal capital in colonial newspapers, particularly in capital cities. While Albury's Federal Capital Association was actively pushing Albury's claims as the capital, there was a lot of support from Victoria. Naturally, they wanted a capital as far south as possible, especially if the capital was to straddle the border. Edward William Cole of Cole's Book Arcade published 20 reasons why Albury should be the federal capital. It is near the set of Australian population it is on the main railway line. It is on the principal river in Australia. It is on the border of the two principal colonies. It is between the two principal cities. It is far enough from the seaboard to be safe from invasion. It is a splendid district. It produces produce in abundance. It is a splendid tree growing district, both for use and ornamental. It has splendid brick clay and other building material. The site is picturesque. It has a beautiful portion of land and water for a federal park. It is in the temperate region of Australia. It has a healthy climate. It is near the highest mountains. It is convenient to the fertile Riverina. And there his claims were widely published. On the negative side, Albury's climate was being claimed by some influential delegates as an issue, citing temperatures of 40 plus degrees. Referendums asking people to say yes or no to the proposed Australian constitution were held in each of the Australian colonies between 1898 and 1900. 
This was one of the most important steps in the process of federation. It was also the first time in the world that a national constitution had been submitted to the people's vote. The 1891 Constitutional Convention agreed that before proceeding with federation, the constitution for governing a new nation should have the approval of the people. The intention to seek this approval through referendums was established at the Korowa People's Convention in 1893. A decision was made by colonial premiers to cite the capital in New South Wales. The premiers of states other than New South Wales insisted that the capital must be more than 100 miles from Sydney. Albury had formed a federation league to support the yes vote for federation but a local anti-federation league had also been proposed. In the 1898 referendum, a majority of yes votes was recorded in each colony, but in New South Wales, a quota of 80,000 yes votes was required, and this was not achieved. So at the next federal conference, the draft constitution was amended. In 1899, as a result of amendments to the constitution recommended by New South Wales, the colonies organised a second round of referendums. This time, New South Wales required only a simple majority of yes votes. Queensland also joined the process. Majorities were achieved in all colonies. By 1900, Western Australia had still not taken steps to hold a referendum. Finally, in mid-1900, when the Commonwealth Constitution Bill had already been enacted by the British Parliament, a referendum was held in Western Australia, with a large majority voting in favour of Federation. A list of factors to be considered in selecting a site was published in 1899. It included climatic conditions, for example, average rainfall and average temperatures, accessibility by road, rail and water, physical factors such as soil type, water supply and the proximity of building materials, the ownership of land, and there are several other factors which were being considered. After Premiers agreed to site the capital in New South Wales, as long as the site was more than 100 miles from Sydney, this brought forward many more towns from across New South Wales joining the list of potential federal capitals. This list was quite quickly whittled down as some were eliminated and others withdrew. There was a stated preference for a site of at least 100 square miles, which is about 260 square kilometres. The site that became the Australian Capital Territory has an area of 2,358 square kilometres or 910 square miles. Albury's first proposed site, highlighted in this map, was centred north of the Tabletop Railway Station. In late 1899, Federal Commissioner Alexander Oliver visited Albury and other proposed sites to assess their suitability as Australia's federal capital. His report, which came about one year later in October 1900, concluded that any of the three, Orange, Yass or Bombala, would be suitable sites for the capital. Albury, he commented, while technically and topographically within New South Wales, would be within the commercial sphere of influence of a border state to such a degree as to make the statutory direction as to location, in effect, nugatory. Oliver's report dashed the hopes of many Albury people, but there are also many who remained optimistic. As we all know, 
the Federation of Australian Colonies was celebrated on January 1, 1901. The site for a capital was still being assessed. Touring parties visited the district in February and May of 1902. The Border Post, on February 11, 1902, published a map of a new proposed site centred on what we know in Albury now as Five Ways, the intersection of Mate Street, War Road, Union Road, Urana Road and Wagga Road. The outline area is 200 by 200 chains, so only about 62.5 square miles, well under the preferred minimum area of 100 square miles. At this stage in the process, some influential residents of the Albury district were becoming quite ambivalent about Albury being selected, a principal concern being land acquisition that would be required for the establishment of a capital. A team of senators arrived at Albury Railway Station in February 1902 to assess the town's prospect of becoming the capital. Unfortunately for Albury's prospects, the weather was terrible with a hot blustery wind and a dust haze over the town. The Albury Banner reported, it looks as if a malicious fate had sent along a northerly buster and uncovered a fierce sun to affect the senators with a disgust for Albury. Senators were reported to comment, it's a nice position for a federal cemetery and another said, as hot as a stoke hole. Another report was released in July 1903, and this report restored hope that Albury would be selected. This time, Albury was rated higher than in Oliver's 1899 report. The report listed the top contenders as 1. Tumut, 2. Albury, 3. Lyndhurst, 4 Bathurst, 5 Lake George and Orange equal, 6 Armadale, 7 Bombala. Albury scored the highest grading for accessibility, topography and general suitability, accessibility and cost, but scored poorly for climate and water supply. An announcement came on October 1, 1908, that a final decision was about to be made. The House of Representatives had agreed to conduct a ballot to choose the site of the national capital with 11 site options. Armadale to the north of Sydney, Orange and Lyndhurst to the west, and the others to the south of Sydney. Yas Canberra, a separate Canberra bid, Lake George, Tumut, Tuma, Albury, Dalgetty and Bombala. Note the dominance of southern sites. This was related to proximity to Melbourne in Victoria, Victoria being a much stronger state than Queensland. Note also the 100 mile arc drawn around Sydney. In response to the ballot announcement, a public meeting was convened in Albury for Monday, October 5, which resolved that a deputation of Mayor Elf War, Alderman Conrad Ten Brink, and Alderman Charles Griffith proceed to Melbourne to advocate the claims of Albury. They also decided to resuscitate the old Federal Capital League. However, the effort proved too late. On Friday, October 9, the Albury Banner reported that in the first ballot, Albury received two votes in the field of 11, then zero in the second ballot, and was eliminated. Delgetty, east of Jindabyne on the Snowy River, was a strong favourite from the first ballot, and they led the voting all the way till the eighth ballot. In the ninth and final ballot, only two sites remained. Yas Canberra received 39 votes, Delgetty 33 votes. This table provides the results of each of the nine ballots. 
Lake George was the first to be eliminated, followed by Albury and Orange. Note that Canberra was eliminated after round four, but that still left the linked Yas Canberra bid. Perhaps the reason that Yas Canberra was the stronger contender was because of access to the rail line at Yas. An actual site for the capital in the area of Yas Canberra was yet to be determined. The Sydney Morning Herald on October 13, 1908 comment, commented that given the chosen area was 2,000 square miles, there is room in the area known as Yas Canberra for half a dozen sites. Note that the Australian Capital Territory finished up 910 square miles, more than nine times the required minimum size. Albury's early enthusiasm as the federal city had perhaps been a romantic notion. When specific factors to be considered for selection of a capital were formulated and seriously investigated, Albury's bid began to lose momentum. The bid was buoyed by Victoria's support for a capital straddling the border and relatively close to Melbourne. But clearly this was not enough to get Albury over the line. Recall also that an area of 100 square miles was preferred for a capital and the proposed Albury site was much smaller. For various reasons, when a ballot was taken, Albury was quickly eliminated. The dream of Albury becoming Australia's first federal city was over.